there friends, it's Ashley here from The Loopy Lamb and TheLoopyLamb.com and today we're going to be doing something a little different here on the channel. We're going to be doing a vlog about my experience designing and creating my daughter's very unique request for a Halloween costume. After creating a poll here on the channel asking if you guys would be interested in a vlog series on this there the majority of you did say yes so I decided to move ahead with that and share that experience with you and I will be sharing some notes on how I actually created this costume and so that way it can kind of potentially give you some starting points if you'd like to create something like this for a child in your life before we get started, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Let's start with talking about the yarn that we chose. Uh, we wanted to shop locally so that way if I did have a need for any la additional yarn last minute, I didn't have to worry about shipping delays or anything like that. So uh, we took my daughter to Walmart and we picked up this Red Heart Comfort yarn. It's a size for uh, worsted weight yarn. It's acrylic and this is a 454 gram ball and each ball has 867 yards. I've already utilized uh, all of one ball in probably about half of a second so I recently had to go pick up a third it, just to make sure that I had more than enough on hand. I'm also using a uh, size K or six and a half millimeter uh, furls crochet hook and um, the fact that this is lighter than my uh, normal Odyssey hook has been really helpful for my hands um, because I'm up against a tight deadline so I'm having to work on this a lot in addition to other projects that I'm working on. If you haven't already seen the poll, my daughter, she's four, uh, almost five, she came to me with a very unique request and said, Mom, I want to be an axolotl for Halloween. And so I was like, sure, that's fine, cool. And then we took a look online and there are no axolotl costumes that we could find. So um, my only other option was to crochet it. I guess I could have sewn it for her, but I, I haven't sewn in a long time. It's not my favorite. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to crochet that for her. So I st decided right off the bat that I wanted a one-piece design, and I wanted to start with a circular yoke. And um, because I, the reason I picked a circular yoke is uh, as an amigurumi designer, I can multiply by six like crazy. Um, and you're working essentially in a circle to create your yoke. So I knew that that would be relatively easy for me to figure out and get done quickly. And so that's where I started. Um, the other um, benefit of me creating this myself from scratch uh, and crocheting it is that my daughter has um, is is very tall but also very petite. So she is like I said, almost five, but technically almost is between a two, a size two and a four, uh, closer to a two. But because I wanted her to be able to wear clothes underneath, because she's going to be wearing this costume to school and outside and it's very cold here for Halloween in Canada. It often snows on Halloween here. So um, I needed it to be uh, baggy on her so she could wear clothes underneath. So I decided to go with the size four measurements and make some slight modifications for her as I went uh, to accommodate her unique proportions. Like for instance, she's very tall. Uh, she's got a very long torso, very long legs and long arms. Uh, so I needed to adjust the numbers uh, given by the Craft Yarn Council uh, for length to fit her specifically. And then everything else was done with the Craft Yarn Council measurements. I used four inches of ease. And if you're not familiar with the concept of ease, that's added um, material or um I've heard it is called added movement, room for movement in the garment. So um, I added four inches to all of the size four measurements um, for chest um, and across the arms, that kind of thing. And um, I'll show you the costume and what I've got done so far. So this is our suit. Sorry, it's a little tangled here with my mic cord. Give me one sec. There we go. So um, again, we did one piece. We started from here, moved down, separated for the legs, and then went into the legs. Now, as crocheters, you can probably see 
my oopsie. And I was watching TV one night, I was working on the legs, and I forgot to turn my rows a couple times here in the leg. And I didn't notice until I had started the second leg. And I was furious. I was like, oh my gosh, how did I do this? I mean, it's one of those things you just just keep trucking, you don't even notice. So I was like, you know what? Uh, what, how do they say it? or plot twist or design feature and now it's a design feature because all I did was just copy it on the second leg because no one will really notice except for me um, when it's uh, being worn right so um, I added a zipper this is a 14 inch zipper and I hand sewed it in because I didn't want that seam if I had used a sewing machine so I hand sewed the zipper in to make it in it uh, almost invisible zipper and because my daughter uh, still kind of struggles with buttons and she's uh, going to be wearing it at school so and she's a toddler so she's probably going to need an emergency or a really quick exit sometimes to use the potty so zipper was uh, the easiest choice for me to make there so after I did my yoke um, I separated for the sleeves, then worked down and made my legs. After my legs, I came back and did my arms. And you'll see that I have some ribbing on the ends of my sleeves and my legs. And then I came back up here and I created my hood. Now, for the starting chain for this, I did a chain 43. I worked into the second chain from the hook and it was all half double crochets. I did a half double crochet across the whole row and then for rows two through 19, I increased six stitches each round. And like they were evenly spaced as if I was creating uh, like a, a regular circle, but we're, turn, we're doing turned rows in order to create that space for the zipper. Um, then for row 16, I did 20, single or 20 half double crochets. I did a chain seven, skipped 23 stitches, and then, uh, did 40 half double crochets and that created my first armhole and then I did another chain seven skipped 23 and did another 20 uh, half double crochets then for another didn't keep track of how many I did but essentially um, essentially I just did uh, turned rows of half double crochet until this point then I uh, started turning um, joining them and working back and forth until I split for the legs. Now this is where I needed to create a unique uh, measurement for my daughter again because she has that very long torso. The um, length given for from the craft yarn council just wasn't long enough for her so I did need to adjust that. But if you are making something like this for your child at home, um, the benefit of doing this from top down in all one piece, they can try it on many times as you go because that's what we did. I wasn't doing anything formal or anything with this like using spreadsheets. Um, it was all like on the fly math in my head and a lot of trial and error trying it on. Okay uh, then I, I, like I said I did my legs, came back for my arms, I attached in the armpit and then started a very uh, gentle tapering in the arm. I didn't again want to lose too many stitches in my arm because I need that extra space in the arm for her to wear clothes underneath. Then I came back up here and attached into the um, remaining loop of my foundation chain and uh, half double crocheted all the way around. So I did have 42 half double crochets and then I did several rows of increasing. And let me just check here. I did one, two, three rounds of increasing by six each round. And then I did 28 rows of just straight half double crochet. And I did that because I didn't want it to just come up straight from the neck. I w did want it to have a more round shape. So doing that increasing brought the fabric away from the face. So when it, it will sit away from the face when she's wearing it. Now, uh, when I was done, I just uh, fastened off and then used a mattress stitch to seam up the hood. It does have a bit of a point here that um, 
I normally don't like, but I'm not too concerned about it right now because that will be covered up in my next steps. So the next steps for the costume are to create the head of the axolotl. And it's going to be a 3D head. And it will, if this is the edge of my hood, it will come off probably about this far. If you can see with my hand. Um, so it's going to come off about this far and it's going to come up and over and attach onto the hood. And I'm going to have to stuff that as I'm working uh, and sewing it onto the hood. So this will be completely um, covered up once we've got the 3D head on. And now um, Abby is not content with just any old axolotl. No, no. She wants to kind of spice things up and put her own flair on it because she loves rainbow. She loves bright colors. So uh, axolotls have these uh, gills on the side of their head, and they're normally like a darker color than their body. So if it was a pink axolotl, you typically would see like a darker uh, pink or red colored gill, and she wants rainbow. So um, she's already been back behind here shopping in the stash. She's constantly down here and uh, she's already kind of picked it out. And she says that when I get to that point, she's going to tell me what yarn she wants to use. So uh, it'll be a surprise to me. We'll figure it out when we get there. And then for the eyes, we will be using some form of safety eye, I think, for the eyes on the head. Uh, she's got her heart set on large, very large black glitter eyes that I got from Chateau Borne Crochet on Etsy. I think I'm more inclined to use a smaller eye, uh, but I think we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there when, I, when I'm in the midst of designing the head to see which eye I think kind of looks best. But... Obviously, it's her costume, so I want her input as well. So we'll have to see how it goes uh, with the size of the head once it's done. Then I'll be moving on to work the tail. Um, she wants a very long tail. I obviously have to take it safety into account for how long I can make it. But I will. it will essentially just be like a very long stuffed tail. It'll be stuffed with polyfill. And then I thought I would be done, but now she's uh, pointed out that axolotls actually have a uh, fin that kind of goes around on both sides of the tail that is an apparently mandatory uh, component of the costume. So I, off the top of my head, after we were talking about it last night, I'm thinking of possibly uh, doing that with some sort of, sort of like single crochet or half double crochet ribbing just to make it easy. Uh, I felt a little ambitious and I thought, hey, maybe I'll make it a really nice lace pattern. And uh, the appreciation of that's going to be lost on a four-year-old. And uh, it's just not, I don't think it's going to be worth the effort to uh, figure out the math for that. So I think we're going to just keep it as simple as possible so I can get this done as quickly as possible for her because she is a very, very eager to put this on. She can't wait and uh, she's constantly coming and asking me, do I need to try it on again, mom? Is it ready yet? So uh, I want to get this done so she can finally get to wear it. So next week I'll be back and I'll be sharing my progress with you on the costume. I will be sharing the head. I My goal for this week is to get the head done at least and uh, hopefully be started if not finished. I might be a little ambitious on that goal, but the tail. And uh, if I don't, then I'll be back a third week sharing the tail and all the finished details. And um, Abby is asking to come onto the channel and show you guys the costume. So uh, we might end up doing that if at the minimum we'll have pictures to show you. So uh, that's it for this week. That's where I'm at. If you have questions uh, or comments, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, you can just leave them in the comment section below and I'll help you in any way that I can. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel. If you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylam.com. Thanks so much for watching, friends. Happy hooking, and I'll see you next time.